Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Boston, Massachusetts for HP Big Data 2015. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. And again, special presentation for HP Software's Big Data event. And third year now we've been doing theCUBE here. Great event, all about the big data. DevOps meets with infrastructure, meets software, meets big data, all that kind of coming together with all the heavy hitters. Our next guest is Jordan Chernev, Manager of Data Technologies at Wayfair. Um, last time we talked to you, we were pre-public, now you're a public company. You guys are growing like crazy. E-commerce, welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of funny, kind of like you know how how much things have changed over the past twelve months, and you you know, kind of like you know looking back and reflecting, hey, what are, what are the things that are still happening? And it's just a tremendous growth that you see across the board. It's kind of like you know the the more time that we sort of spend, I find myself reflecting, hey, what are kind of like you know the things that we've done over the past few years, and it's literally been just grow, 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 and. What does that mean for a person who is in the DevOps kind of like an infrastructure uh, part of Wayfair? It means how do I get ahead of technical challenges so I can solve the business problems in terms yeah. of analytics? You got a gun to your head, you're under a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> in, all, in all serious now, scale is huge, right? We heard Mike right. Stonebreaker up on stage talking about right. you know, data science is the career path, but you just can't become it, learn statistics. And what we're seeing on the app side is apps are the workload, they're dictating policy to the infrastructure, so to be large scale, high growth, you got to get out front of those curves. You got to understand the pressure points for scale, right? So I got to ask you, okay, how is that shaping out? Are you guys rolling out infrastructure? Do the app guys, are they involved in the conversation? Where is the line on the stack where you see this integrated stack kind of trend going on? Again, it's speed, it's DevOps, it's software driven enterprises. Take us through kind of the mindset of what you guys do, and where's that line? I mean, does infrastructure go to the app, or where does big data fit into all that? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so, essentially, if, if you guys listen to, to Stonebreaker's keynote this morning, he mentioned the three Vs about data, it's volume, and uh, kind of like, you know, velocity. From an infrastructure standpoint, you're looking to kind of get ahead of those. Over the past, like, you know, 18 to 20, kind of like, you know, 24 months, we've been fighting this never ending battle of, hey, are we going to have enough capacity to store all the data that most of our analytical and data science teams are looking to engage in their applications? Are they going to be able to satisfy SOAs, SOOs in terms of performance from, from kind of like, you know, from a customer or like, you know, engagement standpoint? How, how do we get ahead of that? And all these conversations do not actually involve a single person. It's actually a team of people who kind of like, you know, architects in their respective fields. We meet people who are architects for Wayfair from a database standpoint. We meet people with architects who are uh, from like a server, server standpoint, which are kind of like, you know, more on the hardware side. Do we get like, you know, the right file system solutions? What are kind of like, you know, the NFS shares that we may need? We also meet with application uh, architects who kind of like dictate, hey, I want to be able to do this because the business requires us to do these particular metrics and these particular amount of requirements so we can satisfy the kind of like the business goal of engaging the customer more, getting some more uh, information for them in the first place. So everything is sort of like, you know, uh, everybody gets engaged, everybody's designs and everybody's involved in terms of input. And once we kind of figure out all the different bits and pieces, the good thing is that we attack the same problems from multiple angles. If, if one kind of like you know solution doesn't work very well because hey this is going to be like you know really difficult to implement in terms of both time and resources, can we do to solve this at a different part of the stack? Can we like you know put this up in the ap application layer? Can this be solved say at Tableau as opposed to like you know Vertica? Can this be solved at a storage layer? Do we throw more capacity at the system? Do we optimize code? If, it's always cool to see that at a Wayfair we always approach and engage these problems at multiple like you know uh, attack points. It's I've I've been in previous organizations and you don't necessarily it always see, oh absolutely <laughs> you you can you can you can it's see like playing a video game well. except the stakes are higher. Yeah, yeah. I commented off yeah. camera. How, how is it your website is so fast? I mean your website is really it's truly awesome. I mean, you said a lot of hard work. That's but now Stonebreaker true. basically put forth the scenario that the all this Hadoop hype and MapReduce and HDFS and Spark. This is all still all about the data warehouse, and the data lake is just one big bit bucket in a, in a junk drawer that's a data warehouse. Do you see it that way? I I don't necessarily like you know see it. I think 
they may be like you know a bit of a marketing buzzword kind of like you know war going on in terms of how do you actually position your solutions in the in the marketplace so you can differentiate yourself from everybody else hey we're offering this so we're going to be a data lake now uh, the way that i approach this is hey what is the right solution for the problem we're trying to do uh, or solve is this is this the right tool that we need in our tool belt what does this mean from uh, like, you know, hey, do we need some people who are going to make SMEs on, on that particular piece of technology? How much can we push this particular piece of technologies? What are, what are kind of like, you know, the pain points? What is like, you know, the limits? Eventually, like, you know, the end goal or the high level goal for everybody, Wayfair is solve, solve the customer problem. You're trying to provide value for the customer. How do we, how do we make Wayfair the place to be for people to shop? And we, we have the zillion options that we want to just, like, you know, present to everybody in terms of, like, you know, furniture, decor, all of that. How do we how do we provide value for for the customer? The actual solutions that we tend to pick, we sort of trying to fix it for or solve for a particular but problem. But traditionally, that EDW was sort of the sun and the solar system, right. and you would sort of develop you know BI and analytics sort of around that, embedded into the the database itself. And is that changing? Are you starting to see analytics become you know more tightly aligned with applications? I know there's still a lot of customization going right. on, but I wonder if you could talk about that that trend and that change a little bit. Yeah, you definitely see a lot of proliferation in terms of technologies that you're trying to use, not just the uh, traditional enterprise, like you know, data warehouse that you had previously. The advent of Hadoop, that sort of changed that a lot. You see companies use the traditional one-two kind of like, you know, combo between, hey, we're going to use Hadoop and we're going to use solutions like Vertica or maybe like IBM ETs, like, you know, combining those. Then you're going to start using things like, hey, I need some R. Maybe I use some R Studio, maybe some distributed R. Like, you know, how, how do I line up all these different components? It's becoming harder and harder to integrate all these pieces because I can only solve this by using this like, you know, this problem by using this, the integrating and actually getting the right team in place who is able to run all of these, like, you know, technologies at, at the best performance, that's that's a different type of challenge as well. But you definitely see that there, there, are, more, there are more pieces to the puzzle these days. Jordan, I got to ask you, because one of the things we love to opine and speculate and pontificate on is the cloud. Sure. Okay, and so it's pretty clear from the Hadoop Summit, our last event, we're going to be in Big Data NYC, um, when um, uh, Hadoop Week um, next in October, and again, it's converging around. Most people are stalled with Hadoop because it's a great data warehouse. It's a data junk drawer, data landfill, whatever you want to call it. Data, data ocean. Data. I mean, data <laughs> ocean is a little bit different. That's my definition. More dynamic, more relevant. Um, cloud powers infrastructure powers the analytics capability. I want you to comment on one your view of the cloud as a company, and, and maybe personal. You know, comments as well, that's fine. Sure. And two, cloud on-prem still, it's a resource. How does infrastructure, whether it's cloud on-prem, there's already reasons why a public company may have on-prem, but what's your view on cloud? Are you there, are you going there, are you not going there? And then the role it plays in powering really next generation analytics, the kind that HP was talking about on stage here. Ones that are real time, in the apps, really providing great value. Sure. So before I can answer most of these questions, I, I have to give you some, some Wayfair history. Uh, our our CTO uh, Steve Conine kind of like you know made the made the decision of hey let's let's go for a, for an on-prem as opposed to a cloud. Obviously, Wayfair was started back in 2002, so cloud was not a thing back then. So we used a, a, a separate data center that that we had at the time. As as the team grew and we sort of started becoming like a much much bigger engineering department, we decided that hey, there is an actual strategic advantage to keeping most of this physical kind of like you know in-house kind of like you know keep it keep it on-prem because that allows us more flexibility in terms of innovation hey maybe I, I can control my all my infrastructure better most of most of the problems that I see with infrastructure maybe the, the awesome people that I've hired they can solve some of these problems for me as opposed to me having to rely on a third party vendor as as time progressed we sort of like you know started seeing more and more people opting for the for the cloud infrastructure uh, we We've sort of looked at that, but never kind of like, you know, actually acted on it for a variety of reasons. Some of it's compliance. We do a lot of stuff with personal identifiable data, so we feel like security is a little bit better if you're on-prem as opposed to in the cloud at this point in time. That said. You're controlling your own destiny, yeah, basically. You got a data less. center, you got a huge commerce engine. All right. We've, it's hard to change the airplane 
change models and the engine at the same time, right? Right, it's very difficult, and actually we've gotten a little more aggressive to the point where we don't just have one data center anymore, we have three globally, so they're like you know, in different geolocations across like multiple continents, so you can see that we're still subscribing to the, hey, this is, this is our own thing, this is like yeah. our on-prem implementation, we believe in the people who can kind of like, you know, make that particular Okay, so what about the cloud better. would be attractive to you? Just to say hypothetically speaking, and I know you're not speaking for Wayfair, but let's just say, can you envision a preferred future where, you know, okay, you got the on-prem, totally buy that, you become the data, a lot of leverage sure, there, a lot sure. of sunk costs, and also, you guys could end up being the Amazon for your own market, right? So I can get that. But where would you use cloud if you could envision that? Uh, I would use cloud for solutions that require a lot of elasticity. So some of the, some of the probably like, you know, technologies, uh, problems that you're trying to solve are, hey, I have something that has a huge spike in workload, but it's very intermittent. I can give you like you know a very good uh, use case for some of these. Yeah, are you guys familiar with the kind of like you know the flash sales type of like you know websites? So yeah. the what the, the flash sales? Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Flash, so they yeah. kind of like you know follow that type of like you know workload. Hey, we're victims sometimes. <laughs> 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 uh, and um, if those those particular sites linger like you know stay very quiet for periods of time, hours on end, and then in one hour you just basically have to like satisfy a lot of like, you know, volume in terms of requests. So what you're kind of hoping to do is, if you have that in the cloud, that infrastructure in the cloud, that allows you to kind of like, you know, be, be cheap and get a lot of ROI in, in most of the infrastructure that, that you put in there. Other solutions that you can probably use that for is if, if you're trying to store kind of like, you know, the, what people call big data, big data sets, a lot of volume, a lot of velocity. That's where the elasticity also helps you for the cloud. You're going to be able to store things like, hey, can I do machine data? Can I do like, you know, sensor data? Can I do like semantics? Can I do, can I do clickstream? Most of these things where you traditionally may have or, or may it's need. It's like spot computing, like a spot price. Absolutely, yeah. So you say, hey, we, we want to throw, you know, a bunch of compute at some workload. Right. So I wonder if I can follow up on that. So it's, it's saying it's the ability to deal with unpredictable workloads. Right. Uh, more so than the simplicity of a sort of an integrated data management approach, which a lot of the cloud guys are doing, because uh, what I'm hearing from you is Wayfair sees th the ability to compete and differentiate. You know, so you're not looking for that simplicity of data management that's less functional. You're looking right. for elasticity in certain use cases, but to, to maintain competitive advantage for the on-premise stuff. Is that a fair summary? I believe so. Yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about the software piece now. I kind of got the cloud. Where is the analytical engine, or is it up and down the stack? I mean, software guys right now are writing large scale, I say DevOps, but cloud apps mainly, or large scale on-prem infrastructure powering uh, software. So, if I'm a software developer, what's your, how do we work together? We say, hey, Jordan, give me some uh, big data, <laughs> big big iron, give me some bare metal. What's, what, give us, take us through the, the provisioning, database. you know, day in the life, and, and escalate it into like one minute. Sure, abs <laughs> absolutely. Uh, the way that, we work with uh, with our kind of like you know environment. We we make a we draw a very good line between infrastructure and application development. That said, we allow people to interface with us. They like, you know, pick our brain. Hey, how do I best implement this? What is the best design for this particular application? This is especially true for some of our mobile solutions that are coming out right now. Uh, there are a couple of applications out there for for your phone. If you guys are interested, you can probably download them. Yeah. It's the Wayfair mobile app. It's the Jossamine mobile app. I have app. the Wayfair mobile app. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so we, we get great. a lot of we get a lot of like you know direct face to face contact. Hey, how do I how do I do how do I best do this? Can I leverage existing solutions that we have in our environment? Sometimes. We We've, we have already solved a particular problem in one for our own application, so we can just borrow the design, like, you know, hey, let's, let's take it and implement it across the board. So, so we got a question from the crowd. Sure. So over the last several years, there's been an explosion in MPP SQL databases that right. run on Hadoop. In addition to the distro vendors, you got HP's database, you got Facebook's Presto, Pivotal's Hawk, Actian, IBM has stuff, Oracle's got stuff, Teradata, Aster, et cetera. How do you, customers like you make sense of this explosion of choice, and what are your critical decision factors? It's actually a, a very, a very interesting question to ask for, from the audience. Thank you for asking that. Uh, our process was was very, very interesting, and we sort of had to do the same thing back in 2013. Uh, basically, the Dave Drolet, who is our senior director of analytics, myself, and uh, Ed Macri, who is our SCP of analytics, sat down and said, "Hey." We're looking for a new solution that will kind of like you know help us grow. 
and we sat down and said, hey, what are the critical things for you guys from an analytical standpoint? So everybody write it off, like, you know, here, here about 15 to 20, like, you know, key, key things that are required for us. Do we need, like, you know, software development? Do we need, like, you know, high speed, high concurrency? Then from, from the database point, which is where I come from, we decided, hey, here, like, you know, the top 15 to 20 items that we have, like, you know, from our standpoint. We took all these together, we, we pre-packaged them, put some weight on them, and we kind of came up with a short list of maybe maybe 35 to 50 requirements that we started looking at vendors. And as, as somebody kind of like, you know, the audience pointed out, it's particularly difficult for you to pick a solution right now, most because of there is so much options, there is so much variety. And most of the solutions tend to like, you know, blur and kind of like, you know, blend. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't have that particular requirements map that solves your internal solution, you know what you're looking for in order to be able to solve this, it's going to be a hard time. So my recommendation is, Organizations start with start with generating those that list of requirements internally. As as you can like you know get to that point, you can start reaching out to vendors and saying, "Hey, are you guys able to like you know solve this particular problem for me in this particular environment with these six requirements? What about if I wanted to grow with this platform for 18 months, 24 months, 36 months? How do I scale this? Asking the hard questions, asking vendors to prove that that they can actually like you know solve most of these questions for you. Those are kind of like you know the things that we did uh, in 2013." And the vendor that kind of like, you know, we ended up picking out in, in early 2014 was HP Vertica because they were the best fit for our environment. Jordan, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you taking the time, sharing your insight. Um, final comment, I'd like you to get to the last word here, is what is um, this event about? I mean, share with the folks out there the vibe. You've been here multiple years. It's kind of gotten corporate bigger, <laughs> but they, they tried to balance that out on the keynotes. But what is, what is going on here? What's the big... Um, big thing happening at this event. To me, the way that I approach this conference personally, and I think maybe a lot of folks will agree with me, it's about engineers trying to solve cool problems with, with, with big data and, and analytics. If you actually take a look at the list of sessions that people have on the agendas, you can see that it's very engineering gear, like, you know, hey, how do I solve this? Mm -hmm. How do I integrate things like Apache, Kafka, and Storm, and with Vodica? We You have sessions on, like, you know, Clickstream, how do you, how do you get the best ROI from, from most of these, like, you know, events? Yeah. So to me, it's, it's, it's still, like, you know, a different, slightly different vibe, but it's still about engineering, solving problems for, yeah. for businesses. The key thing is engineering, real engineering going on, across a broad set of things, not just developers or data science, engineering. Attacking the problem from multiple angles, Wayfair, that they engineer excellence in your platform. Congratulations. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with more insight and data from the HP Big Data Show, hashtag HP Big Data 2015. Go to crowdchat.net slash HP Big Data 2015. Join the conversation, be on the record, ask us questions, we'll take them on Crowdchat. We'll be right back after this short break.